Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a number theory problem. As the title suggests, a and b are integers and this is a Diophantine equation. So we are given that a squared plus ab plus b squared is equal to 19 and we're supposed to evaluate a plus b. So let's go ahead and take a look at the quadratic equation. Did I say quadratic? Yes. This is quadratic in a and b. So let's see what we can do. So when you have an equation like this, one of the things that kind of comes to mind is using an identity. And this reminds me the difference of two cubes. Doesn't it remind you the same thing? If you think about a cubed minus b cubed, it's factored as a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And then we can basically multiply both sides by a minus b here to get difference of two cubes. And that gives us the following. If you multiply the left hand side by a minus b and the right hand side by a minus b, this becomes difference of two cubes, a cubed minus b cubed, and then you get 19 times a minus b. So why am I doing this? Is this going to help us? Not that much, but this will, this will give us an idea. Here's the thing. If you look at a cubed minus b cubed, it's a multiple of 19, right? Because a and b are integers, a minus b is also an integer, so a cubed minus b cubed is a multiple of 19. So when you think about perfect cubes, when are their difference going to be 19? And hopefully you are thinking what I'm thinking, which is 27 minus 8, right? That works. So that kind of gives us an idea. But the million dollar question is, is that the only solution? And if there are any other solutions, how can we find them or all of them, right? So let's go ahead and look at an alternative approach that will give us all the solutions and then we can kind of come back. So basically what I'm trying to say is this is 27, that is 8 because their difference is 19. And obviously you can make a list of cubes and then check their difference and Excel spreadsheets or any other program can do it for you, right? Probably AI. And you can kind of check it out if there's any, uh, there, if there's multiple solutions. But I'm going to do it more systematically. So let's take that quadratic equation. I think we've done a similar problem to this one, but it was linear, not quadratic. Okay, this is more fun. So since this is quadratic, I want to solve for one of the variables. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and make it a full quadratic, minus 19. And I kind of want to write it this way, a squared plus b a, and I could probably just emphasize the fact that this is a squared and plus b is going to be the coefficient of a because it's, in, it's quadratic in a and then b squared minus 19 is just going to be a constant. Make sense? Okay, so this is quadratic in a, coefficient of a squared is 1, which is normally a but it's kind of weird, and b is b which is the coefficient of a, because we're going to use this um, to uh, with the quadratic formula. Okay, so let's go ahead and since this is quadratic, I mean, it makes sense, right? Only makes sense. So a is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is really b squared, minus 4ac. a is 1 in this case because the coefficient of a squared, kind of weird, but 4 times ac, which is b squared minus 19. So this is the stuff that we need to multiply, I mean simplify and divide by 2. So let's go ahead and simplify it and see what that's going to give us. Negative b plus minus. So this gives me b squared minus 4b squared, which is negative 3b squared. But I have a 4 times 19 because the negatives cancel out. And that's 76. So I can start with 76 and then subtract 3c squared from it. Make sense? And divide all of that by 2. Well, this kind of gives us, and I don't know why I wrote C there. It's supposed to be B squared. Okay. So this gave me A in terms of B, but I don't think that helps that much because how am I going to find A from here? Am I just going to plug in multiple values for B? And like test 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? No. 
uh, we're going to do something smarter. Since A is an integer, the left-hand side is an integer, right-hand side is an integer, negative B is an integer, so the radical must be an integer. And not only that, when added to or subtracted from negative B, uh, the sum or difference must also be divisible by 2. But we'll check that later. So let's go ahead and write the condition for this to be an integer. So this needs to be an integer, okay? How can this be an integer? Well, set it equal to something and then require that to be an integer. So this is where I use the C. So set this equal to C where C is an integer, okay? C element of Z. Does anyone know why they use Z for integers? I don't know. Anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. B is an integer, C is an integer, and we're trying to solve for A and B. C is just dummy variable. We'll throw that away once we're done. Okay, cool. Now let's square both sides and then put the B and C together. Great. So now we have a Diophantine equation. The original equation was also Diophantine, but this one is a lot simpler because it doesn't involve a product, it just involves the squares of two numbers. So basically here's what you're going to check. When you look at 3b squared mod 3, this is mod uh, 0 mod 3, okay? And 76 is 1 mod 3, so we want c squared to be equivalent to 1 mod 3. When can that happen? If c is 0 mod 3, which means it's a multiple of 3, then its square is going to be 0 as well. If c is 1 mod 3, its square is going to be 1 mod 3. If c is 2 mod 3, okay, then its square is going to be 4 mod 3, but that's the same thing as 1 mod 3. So there are two kinds of numbers whose square is 1 mod 3, and those numbers are all numbers that are not multiples of 3. In other words, to keep a long story short, c should not be a multiple of 3. And you could easily say that, right? Okay, so since C is not a multiple of 3, we're basically just going to plug in some numbers, and we could definitely do this in a different way, but C can be, C can't be 0, obviously, but C can be 1. So if C is 1, this is going to be 1 squared, 75, 25, and B is going to be 5. Okay, so those are C and B values, not B squared and C squared. All right, what about the 2? That's a 4, 72, divided by 3. 24, that's not a perfect square, so that doesn't work. What about a 3? 3 is not allowed, remember, because it's a multiple of 3, so we're going to skip that and go to 4. 4 squared is 16, that's going to give you a 60, divided by 3, 20, it's not going to work. And then you try 5, 25, subtract it, you're going to get 51, 17, uh oh, that's not going to work. And then you plug in, you know, and probably another method for this would be just replace B with numbers, that's probably going to be a little quicker. But anyways, uh, let's continue. 6 is not going to work. 7, 49, don't worry, we're going to get to 76 quicker. And 49, if you subtract, you're going to get 27, that's going to be a 9, and yay, we got another value for B. Awesome. And then 8 is next, that's 64. The difference is 12, divided by 3, that's a 4. Yay, we got another value. Awesome. This is working. 9 is not going to work, and 10 actually is going to be way too large because you're going to exceed 76. Make sense? So those are the only values, which means, and we don't really care about C, okay? Let's just use the values for B. B can be 2, 3, or 5. Now, how do you find A from here? By substitution, right? You can directly substitute it, or you can use the original problem. What is the original one? A squared plus AB plus B squared is equal to 19. If B is 2, you're going to get A squared plus 2A plus 4 is equal to 19, and then from here you can try to solve for, I think that's going to be a minus 15, right? Minus 15 is going to be 0, and obviously this is going to be 5 and negative 3, so A is going to be negative 5 and positive 3. Make sense? So negative 5 and positive 3 for these B values, and if B is equal to 3, then you're going to get A squared plus 3A plus 9 is equal to 19, which gives you a squared plus 3a minus 10 is equal to 0. And from here, the factor is going to be 5 and negative 2. Again, you're going to get negative 5 and positive 2. So negative 5 kind of pops out all the time. And then these are a values. And uh, finally, if 
b is equal to 5, then you're going to get a squared plus 5a plus 25 is equal to 19. And this is a squared plus 5a minus 14 is equal to, wait a minute, that's not 14, that's a 6, right? Yeah, subtract it the other way around. And then from here we get what? To get a 5, you need 6 and negative 1, so negative 6 and positive 1, okay? Negative 6 and positive 1 for A. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.